And Fletcher Brown with another artist video blog at kicks96country.com. Our guest today is on a radio tour all across the Southeast, and we are happy that she decided to stop here for the very first time. Entering Kicks 96 Country, please welcome Mercedes Nodarcy. How are you, Mercedes? Hello, I am good. All right, I said your good. name right, right? You, yeah, you get a gold star. That was pretty, that was awesome. pretty impressive. I've been practicing that for a while. It's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. So, um, uh, no Darcy. Now, yes. let's, let's, before we get into the music, we're going to get sure. into the music, but okay. we want to get, because since I'm introducing you to my audience, gotcha. we want to get some backstory here, okay? So, um, your name is, uh, it's, it's Cuban. Yes, All right, Cuban, so yeah. You were born originally in Cuba. I was born in Cuba, yep, and um, in 1980, May 5th, 1980, uh, came during the Mario boat lift. Okay, now it's an adventure all to itself. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. I read this in your bio. Yeah. It's all there. Yeah, her bio is fascinating. By the way, you really should go and read it. Um, what was that? I don't. I don't remember that. The um, the Mario boat lift. Uh, it happened, and now it's five. So everything that I remember is you know from my parents and my grandparents and their uh, history of it. But um, basically, it, it occurred for actually a, a very long period of time during the 80s. Um, I don't know how long it lasted, like months and months and months and months. Um, and somebody will probably tell me it's a year or whatever. But um, And F Fidel Castro was under a lot of pressure um, to, uh, to make everything be more free or whatever. Mm -hmm. So as a sh uh, basically a show of... Uh, making it look like it was or whatever he said no everybody's free to leave or whatever and he didn't realize so everybody was like okay so, <laughs> bye so Hello. yeah so basically anybody who had family in the u.s that and heard that news that had a boat yeah got got on their boat and came to get their family yeah it was crazy like fi like there was fishing vessels like yeah. we were lucky where my my uncle had a boat so we got to be in the boat, like just our family. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put prisoners on our boat and stuff. Cause then he got all upset and he started opening up the jails and the mental facilities and putting them on family boats. So then the U S would get stuck with a bunch of prisoners and it, wow, yeah, it was, was crazy. A terrible guy. Yeah. He's not nice. Yeah. He wasn't a nice person. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. We went through, uh, the hurricane was coming. So we went through the whole tropical storm in the middle of the Atlantic. We ran out of gas, got rescued by the coast guard. It was pretty <laughs> That's right, pretty so amazing thing, story. I, I consider myself, and I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm radio, so music is my thing. But I'm mm -hmm. also kind of a history nerd. Yeah, I love history. Yeah, Google that whole thing. Like I've, I've had to. It's amazing. Term. It's insane. Yeah, the Mario boat lift. The Mario, boat and we lift. got here um, May fifth, um, nineteen eighty. Yeah. Okay, so you landed. In, like, uh, we Key West. Key West. Okay, that's the closest right. point, obviously. And then they had at by that point, I think it was going on before we got here. Um, they had set up the Coast Guard and the National Guard had set up um, big um, like a tent city with immunization, checkpoints, food, mattresses, cots and everything in the big hangars in the marina. And then, um, yeah, we we stayed there for the evening. You had to get checked and everything. And then um, your family would come and get you. And and then we went to West Palm Beach where I was raised. Yeah. Florida, yeah. This is all right. It's pretty cool. Obviously, is history it? is if you're like me, history is fascinating. And to have been someone who was born into and lived in a yeah. moment of history like that, that yeah. is also yeah. fascinating. Like we definitely do not take freedom for granted. Like oh, wow. it's I yeah, mean, in this oh yeah. It's oh, like I've known a few yeah, uh, Cubanos in, in mm -hmm. my life, and all of you mm -hmm. are just very much, very grateful and yeah. very uh, hard working and uh, yeah it's I, yeah. I don't think I see people who wave the American flag harder yeah you know. we're yeah we're very proud absolutely yeah um so let me ask you then with the with your Cuban heritage and yeah. those roots um you you speak you know I uh, do I Spanish was Spanish. my first language so I had to, had to learn English in kindergarten had to repeat half of kindergarten because it was okay thank you Sesame Street um, so yeah. So those, but these two cultures have now blended together in you. Yes. And I wonder how that impacts your music. The song, we're going to get to the single, Little Things. Yeah. Little Things is the single. It's a wonderful song. I, I recommend everybody go and look for it. Um, it, I'd like to hear honestly more out of Mercedes Nodarcy mm -hmm. because I'm like, I, how much of that heritage just creeps in to your music? I think that's why, um, I became a percussionist. Uh -huh. I think first it was just kind of in me. Um, and I took percussion and I did drums instead of, you know, getting a melodic instrument. 
Um, and then I eventually found out I could sing and then started singing and then drums kind of took a, a backseat. But um, I find that when I'm writing a song, um, and Pedro will attest to this, when we're producing and stuff like that, like rhythm is very important to yeah. me. And the, the feel and the drive or the beat, even if it's a slow song, it's just, I'm always listening to the rhythm of it. And it, it has to be yeah. a cultural thing. I don't know. Well, I have no idea. Right? You know, like, it's I mean, gotta just not, be to get, not to get stereotypical yeah, here, yeah, but let's but talk like Ricky Ricardo. You know? Right. Going back to I Love Lucy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, gotta be a thing. Yeah, I don't, it, yeah. it absolutely is. A when thing. I listen to a song, I listen, the, the first thing that comes out of me is that that rhythm. That yeah. I'm like, oh, I like that. Like you know, for, those, for those of us Americans who aren't, regularly exposed to uh, South America and uh, specifically Cuban mm -hmm. music, you might remember anything from, you know, I Love Lucy, oh, yeah. Ricardo, yeah, yeah. all the way up to um, Gloria Estefan mm -hmm. in the 80s. Gloria Estefan, I was so yeah. in love with Gloria mm -hmm. Me I too, so I loved her. her. Um, and, and Miami Sound Machine. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and those, those percussive rhythms. Oh, yeah. But those are not things that are necessarily known in country. That's at least true. Not, not early traditional country. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, obviously, percussion has crept its way mm -hmm. into all music everywhere because it's awesome mm -hmm. and it and music needs it. But why then were you drawn to country music? Um, that's what, you know what I'm still asking that to myself because I I'd like to learn to see where how I'm going and what road I'm taking. Yeah, I we were looking through all the stuff that I've dabbled and written and stuff like that, and we we were finding that every time we started looking at a song, I was like this has a country feel to it than the other one. Oh my gosh. It totally is. A, and I never even realized it. I just kind of did it. I don't, I have, that's a great question. I, I love the, um, I love the storytelling of country. I love the fact that you can um, do messages of faith or hope or things like that. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I also love blues and R and B and mm -hmm. soul. And I feel that that that's a little bit in the country. Um, I don't know. It's just, um, I feel comfortable in that genre. And country I'm a worship music, leader. Country music feels comfortable. Oh, it's so it's great. Cool. It is. It really is. It's it's um and there's and there's all different styles for all different types of uh likes or people that, you know, whatever. It's 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 a great, it's a great genre. Okay. All right. Now you mentioned just a second ago that you're you're a worship leader. Yeah. That was gonna be another thing yeah. that I wanted to touch on. Your your faith and your role with your faith and mm -hmm. how you use it. Uh, publicly and yeah. openly and in your community and that is uh, reading your bio on your mm -hmm. website it's clear that that is of major importance to you yeah so talk to us a little bit about um about what it is that you do and how you use your faith um I, currently my um, my job my weekend job is um worship leader at my church okay so i lead the worship music wise um in the church and um i've done it since i was little and now I get paid for it, but I did it for so long. It's just, I think um, music in general is something that uh, touches people. So if you have the ability to be in charge or have the ability to lead with music, I feel you have to have that responsibility to give them a message that for those three little minutes that they're listening to that song, whenever they're trying and whatever problems they're having and whatever issues they're having in real life, in their life, you can take them time machine to then those three little minutes, you can give them either hope, inspiration, um, something to uh, give them a reset. And maybe when that song is done, they'll have a little bit more light in them than they did before the song Absolutely. happened. So I just feel when you do that in your songs and the message in your song, I think it just, I don't know. I, I think that's we need good. a little bit more light in this world. So if we, if we can do that, that that's great. All so, right. Yeah. So like w w your songs are almost like little three minute sermons. Three and a half right. Minutes like, sermons. But without, without necessarily right. all being. Yeah. Like and that. not, you're right. And not putting yeah. in people's face. It's literally, it's a good message. Yeah. Whether you, whether you, you take it from the scriptural base or whatever, it's a great message. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's a positive message of being a light for others um, making sure your light is still shining so you can help others. Because mm -hmm. if our light's gone, you know, we need, that's, it's impossible to help others. So, yeah. The current single is The mm -hmm. Little Things. The Little Things. All right, so talk to us about that song. What is the message of that song? Is that one that you wrote? Yeah, or? yeah. The message is basically finding the everyday blessings in our lives, um, the little blessings in our lives, 
Um, and then taking that out into the world, just being grateful for those. Cause a lot of times, and especially now, um, with all the stuff that's going on, we tend to focus on, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. My job and this, et cetera. And we forget that every day we're surrounded by blessings, whether it be your little kid smiles at you in the morning, whether it be the fact that you were able to put your shoes on and they both match, like just the silliest things, but, or you meet somebody and they smiled at you or somebody held your door or whatever, the little things, if we start focusing every day on tiny little things that occur to us that are blessings, then I feel that day can be a little better than it was the day before if you didn't notice that. And if you have a grateful heart and you start living your, your life in a grateful uh, spirit, then I think we can allow um, that inside of us to help others that might not have it. You know, it's kind of like that. We talked about it in the other state, like ripple in the pond kind of thing, an effect. So yeah, and that's what the song's about. It's basically reminding you to look at the stop, take a breath, look around and look at the little things. So yeah. There's so much music in Mercedes Nodarcy's um, web page. I, I wasn't ready to for the just the length of your career and all the music that you've made. And I'm like, I'm only just now hearing the little things. So here's the thing. If you've liked anything that Mercedes has said about her music and about her life story, I I recommend that you find her on her socials and on her website. Where can people go and find her? Um, MercedesNodarce.com is my website. And then um, any social platform is Mercedes Nodarce. It's okay. N-O-D-A-R-S-E. It really, really, really is great. And there's Thank plenty you. of music for you to jump into. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff in there. Um, and Mercedes, it's like, I just want to say thank you for sharing thank your you. story with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for coming to Kick Six. And if you want to hear the little things, make sure you call us at Kicks 96. We'll be happy to play it for you. And we'll see you next time on another artist video. Gotta look at the little things.